In case you're wondering about when I said listen to the bell, I have a timer that I run on the computer screen that lets me know how long I've been talking, and it's set to go off uh, at 10 minutes, so it keeps me honest on the length of these videos. So we talked about the classic Porter generic strategies, and Porter early on said, you're either fish or fowl. You can't combine them. Unfortunately, uh, for Mr. Porter, this is one of the few areas where he was wrong. Companies have found ways to integrate their some elements of cost leadership uh, and differentiation simultaneously. Now, you'll see a lot of different names for this strategy. Some people call it a best value strategy. More typically, it's called a combination strategy or an integrated cost leadership differentiation strategy. And this is simply where you try to create features for the customer that are maybe above the industry standard, but um, are different, or I'm sorry, they're above the industry standard, they're different, but you do a good job of controlling your costs. And, and the company, the brand, I should say, that I'm loyal to is Land's End. And so I have a Land's End shirt on today. <clears throat> uh, the reason I like Land's End is I have long monkey arms. So if I go to your typical department store and buy a dress shirt, it will look like this on me. And that's okay, I guess. But if I go to Land's End, I'm able to order exactly the neck size I want and exactly the sleeve length I want, and that's golden. And so it creates value for me in that I can get a dress shirt that fits me. But they were able to do it in such a way that cost-wise, they are just as cheap and in some are often cheaper than the department store shirts I look for. And so they've got some element of the cost leadership going and they have some element of the differentiation going. Now how do they have cost leadership going? Well for many years, uh, and I'm going to date myself now, um, Land's End sold strictly through catalogs and now obviously they have the website. They were a successful company for many years. Sears bought them and they actually brought some of their products in, uh, into the Sears stores and I was afraid that Sears was going to wreck the Land's End brand. Uh, now, today, as, as I make this video, Seal, Sears is trying to sell off the Land's End, and I'm like, yes, yeah, sell it to somebody good. Don't ruin it. But if you think about how do they keep the cost leadership, they've got this good-looking dress shirt where I can order exactly the sizes I want. They're not custom cut for me, but they can keep a broader sizing array in. Why? They don't have bricks-and-mortar stores. So they've taken a huge cost chunk and done a cost leadership strategy by saying, we're going to have a trade-off. You're not going to be able to walk in and buy our shirt. You're not going to be able to try our shirt on. You're going to have to, to order it. It's going to have to be delivered. And hopefully you know your sizes. <clears throat> so, But in, in the process of doing that, je they jettison all of the cost associated with the bricks and mortar retail. So that's the cost leadership part of it. And the differentiation is, <coughs> Excuse me. For me, I can uh, get the shirts I want that fit me. And same thing with the pants, where I don't have to see what they have in stock. They almost always have my uh, size. And for me, the guy who hates to shop and is very cost conscious, I get all of that and pay on par, maybe even a little less than the department store brands. Touchdown. So you try to do both things. Do some upscale, but do it in a way that doesn't raise your costs. So you've got some integration, some element of the cost leadership going on. The advantage of this should be pretty clear. You have a very strong position uh, because you take like the best of, uh, of those things we talked about with the differentiation and the cost leadership. It's a very strong position that is hard to break people into or hard for your competitors to break into. And I'll be honest with you, in the business strategy game in BSG, to the extent that one or more of the companies really are able to run a successful integrated strategy, you're going to see they are one tough mamba to uh, push off the top of the heap. The risk in the real world is that you'll get it wrong on either side. You won't manage your costs well and or you won't get the elements of differentiation right and then you'll be what's called stuck in the middle which is to say you'll mean nothing to everybody and arguably that's exactly where Sears is today arguably that's exactly where JC Penney's is today 
although they tried to work they, in the in the mid 2000s they successfully worked their way out of that trap and then fell back into it um, on the automobile front you could say for a while that was where GM and Chrysler and Ford were other than their truck lines you know about their large small cars who cared uh, they meant nothing to everybody now hopefully for those companies that's changing somewhat it's tricky though to get it right because you are trying to manage two things at the same time that you could argue are pulling you in different directions so when you have a natural cost leadership position you know where to go when you have a natural differentiation position you know where to go when you're trying to run up the middle you don't have this natural home in closing I think that most not all but most firms are running some sort of an integrated strategy. The question is the degree to which they're trying to do. For example, I would argue that Walmart is not a pure cost leadership. Um, they tried to move upscale in some things, not very successfully in some cases, but I think they have elements of differentiation even within uh, their existing store structures. Certainly Target is, a, is an example of a company that has moved successfully with an integrated strategy. Likewise, on the high-end side, there are probably companies that you and I are very aware of who maintain prestige products but are really working their value chain trying to take cost out such that they can charge the same price as their other highly differentiated uh, companies, but they have superior profit margins. And what you see on this slide is, contrary to what Mr. Porter says, when you get this right, the profits are the greatest and you can see on the other side of the slide when you get it wrong the profits tend to be the lowest although not quite as low as the uh, the differentiation I'm sorry the focus differentiation sample but I think most not all most firms are running elements of these let's wrap up with two topics the first is the internet the internet is seen to is seen to have affected these basic business strategies in a couple of ways. For one, it's made it easier for companies to take out costs. This is where Porter talks about the operational effectiveness and maybe it's become easier to take out cost. It's also made focus strategies probably more viable because you're able to touch these niches in a more cost-effective manner and it allows you to do some mass customization. It also hurts the differentiation strategy somewhat in that with all the online rankings you start to have a better feeling of is there value in this differentiation and a lot of transparency on the pricing. So the consensus is this stuff is even harder in the internet age than it was before. Lastly, this, our, the textbook chapter has a great discussion of industry life cycle and I really want you to read it. I'm not going to repeat it what I'm going to do is let you read it and then I'm just going to disagree with it. In general, the industry life cycle says in the beginning it's about differentiation and as the product matures it becomes all about cost leadership and then in the end only the fittest survive. And that's true, but it's not immutable. That's in part what strategy is about is trying to break that inevitable transition through the industry life cycle. So what I have on uh, the slide is a picture of Tide Pods. You'd be hard pressed to find a product that has been around longer in the commercial marketplace than laundry detergent but you still see companies trying to innovate and these pods are really cool because they have pre-mixed amounts and that's interesting because one of the profit sources for in, for the liquid detergent people is people tend to use too much and with these pods you always use the right amount or at least you're not using grossly too much but I wanted to just show you that to say look at how companies are still trying to innovate in products that have been around for hundreds of years whether it's the product itself whether it's the packaging whatever always trying to be different to break it out of that pure commodity that wraps up our discussions of business strategies look forward to some great exam or some great exercises with you whether it be in class or uh, online in the online strictly online sections talk to you soon